So hello everybody from, uh, from the Fellows Alliance. What I want to do is I want to introduce the Fellows Alliance. Um, so the Fellows Alliance is kind of the umbrella of uh, six brands. It's um, Telos, um, dealing about uh, telephone calls in studios, audio codecs, then Omnia audio processing for FM. Axia Audio is all about audio IP, mixing, routing, and distribution. Uh, linear Acoustic is uh, audio processing and loudness control for TV in real time. 25.7 is doing some niche products like watermark uh, improvement and watermark monitoring and special delays like uh, profanity delays. And last but not least, Minnetonka Audio is uh, audio software for TV. On the one hand, uh, plugins for post-production and on the other hand, um, workflow management for audio in TV stations to get the uh, audio sorted of content coming in file-based. So why the Telos Alliance? Why should a broadcaster partner up with us? It's about the innovation. It's about disruptive innovation. And uh, a quote I found which describes pretty much what the heartbeat of the Telos Alliance is about is if you have two things which are already known and you put them together, um, that's innovation and you uh, get something new out of it, that's innovation and the most time on our side it's a disruptive innovation. And to explain a bit more why this is and, and where we started off, I want to roll back to the year uh, 1982. At that time, Steve Church, who was the founder of the TELUS Alliance, was an audio engineer in a radio station in Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, he was never satisfied how telephone calls sounded on the air. So he talked to the engineers of AT&T and uh, said, listen, can we do something to improve, get rid of the noise and kind of compensate the delay out of telephone calls? And they said, no, we already tried everything and there's nothing you can do because you know, never know how the uh, telephone calls are routed uh, all around the country, so there's nothing you can do. So then uh, two things happened. So one thing was that uh, Steve got a brochure of um, uh, analog devices, one of the first DSP chips uh, where he started to play around with and uh, program how you can manipulate and uh, filter audio on the digital base. And then one day he had that idea and he thought, so what if I send a burst signal into the telephone line once the call uh, got established and measure what's coming back? Then I know the noise and I know the uh, delay. I can compensate out the delay and I can, with uh, reversing, uh, cancel out the noise. So he did and built 10 units of the first telephone hybrid on his kitchen table, put one on air in his station, sent one unit over to his buddy Frank Foti, who was at that time um, station engineer at Set 100 in New York. Both put it on the air and then um, the phone didn't stop to ring uh, at Steve's house because everybody else, all other engineers who heard that sound wanted to know what is that, what he's using, and if they could use it as well. And one of those phone calls was the head of engineering of the CBS radio group. And he said, Steve, um, I don't want to try that unit out. Just, you know, I place a order for 50 units here. And then Steve recognized, so 50 units is nothing I can do anymore on the kitchen table. That was the founding of the um, Telus Alliance or the Telus company. And uh, what Steve did is he changed the way of talk shows uh, were done because he found a better way to get um, telephones, telephone calls into radio uh, without all that annoying noise and, and delays going on. Then I just mentioned uh, his, his uh, buddy Frank Foti. Um, he was not really happy with uh, the on-air sound of uh, radio stations. So he started uh, to develop his own FM audio processors. And then when the digital technology came along, he thought, well, uh, there's so much you can do on the digital domain with audio, uh, way more than on the analog side. So I have to, I have to make a um, fully digital FM audio processor. Everybody else at that time said, you can't do that without uh, hearing digital grunge, but Frank, Frank did it. And um, so he was the first one, others followed to do FM audio processing with uh, DSPs. Then uh, 1996 was again a two things matching. 
Uh, ISDN was very popular at that time, and uh, Fraunhofer just announced uh, MP3 to the market. And Steve looked at both specifications and said, well, um, ISDN and MP3, so the data rate of MP3 fits nicely into two uh, ISDN channels, and he built the first ISDN codec using MP3, and it was actually the first commercial product uh, with MP3 uh, built in, and that again revolutionized the uh, way remotes were done worldwide um, with that technology. Then 1998, uh, the first internet streaming appliance, um, uh, the uh, Audio Active, and uh, at that time that was a bit too early because people didn't really know what to do with it because at that time everybody was using Real Audio and Winamp to uh, download music to play it and streaming was like, what, what do you mean with streaming? So. 1998, Minitonka set the milestone with the first uh, software-based coding solution with Surcode uh, to encode Dolby audio uh, software-based. 2002, uh, um, Tim Carroll, who is the founder of uh, the Linear Acoustic brand, he just came from Dolby and um, looked at TV sound at that time and uh, recognized that on the one hand, the TV sound can have improvement and needs improvement because it's really poor. And on the other hand, it's annoying for the listeners, for the viewers, which are also listeners, that you have loudness jumps in between the content. So um, somebody has to do something to uh, correct the loudness on TV channels. And he brought out the first DTV audio processor. 2003, and that was really a huge milestone um, for the company. Um, Again, it was Steve who came back from a computer convention from the CBIT and uh, Cisco just announced a new series of Ethernet switches with all that new protocols going on like quality of service and others. And he thought, well, that could be the right technology to have audio over IP reliable working in a broadcast facility. And he had to dream because uh, all systems which were on the market of the broadcast facilities with all the TDM-based systems, TDM-based consoles, TDM-based routers, were proprietary and not talking to each other. Well, you had a common signal, which is AES3 and, and, and MADI, but uh, each equipment for itself was proprietary. And he thought, so if we have everything on a network, everybody could plug in and send and receive audio from and to the network. So um, he developed um, uh, Excel LiveWire, which was the first um, audio IP protocol for um, broadcast and uh, we're very proud that we are still the only ones which are doing pure audio IP. In our systems there is no TDM based console, there is no TDM based router system. We do everything pure over IP and uh, that's the um, huge benefit because um, everything is transparent, everything is on the network. And at that time, so uh, we remember the three stages of uh, the fear and uh, and doubts the competitors spread about uh, our product. So it, first was, it'll never work. It'll, it won't be reliable. Then was, we showed it it's reliable and it is working. Then uh, they said, well, it's working, but you really don't need it. Our TDM by stuff is uh, way better and, and reliable and, than the other one. And now we are at the stage where they say, look, we have it too. So let's go, go forward to uh, move towards the uh, the, uh, where we are today, so uh, 2011 Minnetonka Audio, first file-based um, solution to uh, um, sort out audio channels in um, TV content. So nowadays uh, TV stations receive a lot of content file-based. Those come in and um, not all the audio tracks are in the right sort order. So uh, there are some material is coming in, just stereo, needs to be up mixed to 5 to 1. Others is coming in just with 5.1 and needs a stereo down mix as on track uh, 7 and 8. Um, some audio needs to have um, Dolby encoding applied to it. Some uh, tracks have to uh, be loudness controlled. And the um, audio tool server can do that all automated. So you define in, uh, uh, incoming folders and the software is looking at those folders. So a huge improvement for the workflow in TV station because um, people before that spent hours of hours of hours to go into the audio, check all the audio and get it corrected. 
bit later, um, the same solution um, became available as a cloud solution. The next one I'll uh, skip a bit because watermarking is not that necessary here in, or not necessary here in uh, New Zealand. But we did something to improve how watermarking works on um, difficult audio like spoken word and jazz music to get it improved and better recognized by the watermarking systems. Then um, we also made the first um, authoring and, um, uh, and, and monitoring system for ATSC 3.0, which is MPEG-H, uh, the new um, video format. And uh, this was used at the uh, Olympic Games in uh, South Korea this year. Next uh, milestone we are really proud about because it's another um, without metrics product. So uh, we all know intercom systems and each intercom system needs a central metrics piece of gear somewhere where everything is wired to that uh, central metrics. And with our intercom system, we revolutionize the uh, communication in, in broadcast because first of all, we do it metrics free. And second, we do not differ between contribution audio and communication audio any, anymore. It's all the same audio format. You can interchange between the two systems very easy with our new intercom system. On the way from the 80s until today, we um, got a lot of patents. We got a lot of uh, awards, like um, awards for the audio for the um, Olympic Games in 2011 and 2014. And, um, over the years, Steve recognized that the market, the industry needs to be educated uh, about audio IP because that's new and um, um, everybody knows a little bit here and there, but um, not the, the, the whole picture. So he wrote a book about audio IP. So that was where we are coming from. And um, where we stand at the moment of today is that um, we have still proprietary products, hardware boxes, but in the inside, the most of the time it's just a computer. So we have software in a box. And in the future, where we are heading to is we will still have dedicated hardware because we, we still need intercom interfaces, we still need microphones, uh, speakers, we still need transmitters, but the functionality in between will be virtualized, will become just a piece of software you can uh, universally use um, in your environment. So this can either be in your private data center, in your, your server farm. This can be in a private cloud. This can be in a public cloud. And this can go up to the point where you just rent and lease a software as a service out of, of the cloud. So that is where we're thinking uh, where the future is going to. And the future is already around us in some points and aspects. So um, our technology strategy, uh, strategy is, um, let's roll back to LiveWire, where we did um, 2001 and 2003. At that time, the IT world made um, tools available, like modern switches, like uh, routers. Bandwidth came available. So that made it possible to have audio IP nicely and reliable work over a local area network in the LAN. And today's companies like uh, Amazon with the cloud service or um, Google with the cloud service, they provide us technology and the structure and the infrastructure to do that also wide area network wise, going um, in, in cloud services. And this is what we, what we are using. So, um, what does that mean for, for you as broadcasters if you go there? There's no more that and because you can use your hardware environment if it's your private data center just with the software. The software is just an update to the next version to the next version. You don't have to roll out hardware anymore um, as you're used to at the moment. So you don't have to replace um, core boxes for mixes anymore. And um, To uh, work out of the cloud, we need some standards. And uh, there are some standards co uh, coming already. And uh, Ken will talk uh, 
very deep about those new standards like AES 67, 702110, AES 70. Those standards will help you then to interrupt with other manufacturers out of that new scenario of the cloud. If we look into uh, today's broadcast facilities, we see um, rooms, dark rooms with uh, lots of knobs and, and faders and buttons and small displays and big displays. And the rec rooms are full with uh, uh, proprietary uh, hardware boxes from different manufacturers. And our vision for the uh, uh, tomorrow studios is to simplify everything, to have simple studios, easy ways to interact with the, uh, with the technology, um, easy mixing surfaces, software appliances, which help you to virtualize some parts of the mixers. Um, so you also see the Bionic Studio, and uh, Dan from uh, Broadcast Bionics will talk about uh, their vision and their possibilities with, uh, with that kind of software in the modern studio or in the uh, studio of tomorrow. Um, you still will have uh, some hardware devices together, uh, newscasts, um, but you probably will use your uh, belt pack of the intercom to gather uh, that information. And um, is that completely just a, a thinking about the future or the idea about the future? No, it's already existing. Uh, there is a proof of concept, the BBC Weiler project, where they um, centralized all the uh, technique, all the DSP power, all the content uh, playouts in two data centers. And uh, with that, they could reduce 500 racks down to 16 racks. And um, this is ongoing, so it's almost done. Um, now, at the moment, already 30 stations of the BBC are uh, broadcasting out of those two data centers. And the stations are local and um, connected via remote to these data centers. Again, um, Dan will tell you more about that. So why Telos Alliance? Because we are the innovators. We do disruptive innovation. We have been the innovators in the past. We are the innovators right now. We will be the innovators in the future, and we are not just followers. And that's a good reason why to choose us. And uh, another quote I found is uh, also describing pretty well what's going on in R&D at uh, Telos Alliance. It's not about the dollars you put into um, the development, it's about the people which are behind the scenes and um, we all have a huge passion for better broadcasting. So thank you very much for that part. I changed the presentation for Ken so he can talk to you about um, the new standards. <laughs>